Con? Yeah, let's talk a little con. Tell me, what do you want to start with? Well, I, mean, I think the movie that most people have been talking about, have been interested in hearing the reaction to, and were included in that, is Francis Ford Jim Coppola's Henson Megalopolis. <laughs> yeah, I... Look, is it considered spoilers for what we're going to mention? Because I find it very interesting, and I don't think it's a spoiler. It is reporting of an event that happened. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe, I, you know, I don't think we're talking about specifics of the plot, but we are talking about what the bounds of this movie are. So yeah. maybe if you're spoiler phobic, you'd find it a spoiler. But I, I, think, exactly. I think we're clear. I'm not showing you a cam. <laughs> I'm showing you a picture, bro. Describe to the people what what the hell was going on. Uh, so there is a section in Megalopolis where apparently a person gets up and speaks a lie at the delete. screen. <laughs> and what? Then, the and then Adam Driver's character within the movie responds to that person. He's doing a full 4D midnight movie kind of experience. I, I he's breaking the boundaries of cinema, bro. They said the AMC employees are gonna have to come in to talk to Adam Driver. <laughs> <laughs> Need to ask for a raise. Yeah, we're not, we're, there's mean, no way we're getting this. this. Is this why no American studio wants to distribute it? That they don't want to incur the cost of hiring a local actor for each showing? Boo. <laughs> uh, I, I don't see this making it to the whatever rendition of Ren we're going to see. Yeah. It intrigued me. It yeah. might be the dumbest thing. I've heard that this is the new Babylon, maybe even below that one. Mm -hmm. I'm excited, dude. I'm actually really excited for this movie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there have been reactions all over the pl place. There are people calling this a masterpiece. There are people calling this a disaster. I think there are more people calling this a disaster than a masterpiece. But the reactions are not muted. Everybody is coming out of this movie with a lot to say. And look, okay. sometimes you see that and, and you get a Babylon, which is a movie that a lot of people don't like, but we both had a really good time with. You know? um, sometimes you come out of a movie like that and you get an aggro drift, which I don't know if you had a chance to catch it yet. Not yet. Not yet. It's not, not great. Yet. It's not great. Um, got, got about 15 minutes into that one. Felt like I didn't really need that much more. So hopefully it won't be quite so bad. Uh, but like, I'm, I'm glad to have this out there. I'm, I'm here for the experiment. I'm here right? for for bold choices and that the man is self-financing this all the better. Like throw that wine money at it. I, I love to see it. Damn bro. <laughs> the letterbox curve is unreal. There, there's like no most common rating. It's such an irregular heartbeat. I saw all the people who they said, turned this down. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That and the VFX people coming out <laughs> did kind of make me go, okay, maybe it is going to be really bad, but I'm still yeah. interested. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, um, we'll we'll have Ewan on next week to report his thoughts from yes, Khan. I believe he did not enjoy this one, so we'll we'll learn some more. Um, I don't care though; I still want to see it. I still really yeah. want to see it. It's just one of those I need to, I need to see the 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 crash footage myself. Yeah, but Khan is going on at the moment, and there is a slew of movies. So much good stuff. I, I feel like half the stuff hasn't even premiered yet, but it's been awesome to see people just reporting back of some really crazy stuff. Seeing the first mm -hmm. images of some of these movies coming out. Um, we got a couple of links as well. So, your boys, the Intercut boys, couldn't make it out to France, but. Some people Friends were nice to send us a couple us. links this way, so we yeah. do have a couple of movies. Uh, but as we go down them, name me some of the ones that have stood out to you. Well, as you know, a big fan of Yorgos Lanthimos, and you were a big fan of uh, Poor Things, his most recent movie, we're mm -hmm. just like a month away from getting Kinds of Kindness here, but it premiered at uh, Con and... I think the response has been mostly positive about it. A lot of people are saying this is kind of a return to his more acidic types of films in the mold of Killing of a Sacred Deer or Dogtooth. And as a fan of a lot of those early Yorgos Lanthimos movies, that gets me extremely excited for Kinds mm -hmm. of Kindness. Um, I've heard that Jesse Plemons has plenty to do in this movie as well. So our Sick. boy, it's going to be a good spotlight for him. I don't know. Um, that's the movie right now at a con that I'm just so um, excited for. I feel like every poster, every trailer feels like such a cool vibe. Mm -hmm. um, 
We had talked about the last one, uh, Poor Things, maybe being his most accessible film, that mm-hmm. it still covered all of his themes, but was able to present itself for the audience. Mm-hmm. So now that he's got that audience, he kind of trolled him and he went, nah, this is still me. And they're like, uh, what? It's like Tyler, the creator fans. <laughs> Yep. Accidentally putting it on shuffle and going, um, this isn't Flower Boy. <laughs> I heard he's mean in this one. I yeah. heard it goes way farther than what people uh, were I- expecting it to, which I think is weird because it's like, watch the filmography. I'm just excited as you are. Kind of, kind of. So very, very excited for that one. Um, the premiere of Furiosa was at con mm-hmm. and i mean you're seeing that one later tonight so right, yeah. you don't have to wait that much longer i got my ticket for later this week it seems like at at the very least people are coming out of this one saying it's really good some people are saying it's on fury road's level a lot of people are saying it's not quite on that level either way like i'm just in for like another epic george miller vision it, it, there's so many interesting little anecdotes coming about um so i don't know if you've seen any of the quotes that Anya taylor joy has given about her performance as well tell me but i mean she was saying that this was like uh a real like a really difficult role for her there's an interview with kyle buchanan of the new york times where he apparently asks her why it was so difficult and she won't talk about it really yeah so i'm I, I feel like some people were interpreting that as like the set being like a bad environment, but because they had that what, with the last one too, with the with uh, Hardy and what's your name fighting, yeah, yeah, and and there are people who say that it can be difficult working for George Miller because he's the only person who really sees the whole picture, and you often feel lost and not sure what you're doing. But my interpretation of the Anya Taylor Joy quotes were more so that she was like accessing this extremely dark upsetting place within herself and Mm. it's almost hard to discuss the because if you're if you're embodying a character like furiosa and you're an actress on and you're taylor joy's level like that is emotionally taxing work so to me it just makes me more excited for her performance that she's accessing something so difficult that she doesn't even want to talk about it i have said it multiple times i i know people don't agree with me but when i hear the cast and crew had the blast on set that usually means I'm not going to have that because they had the fun. I right. end up seeing a different picture up there. Not that I think people need to suffer when they're filming a movie, but when they're tapped in and actually working, man, those results do stand out. And we know what happened with Fury Road and how they made that. And it it stands to this day. We we watched the last three Mad Maxes this weekend. The, or the first three, I should say. Yeah. How do you freaking reinvent your own damn franchise with the last one. And then it sounds like he's doing it again. It's it's some unreal stuff from the guy who did Babe and, right? and uh, Happy Feet. Yeah. Oh. My laser disc. Shout what out. What the hell is that? Whoa! Yeah, my laser disc of the first Mad Max. There we go. What the hell? Do you even have a laser disc player? No, but it's a good piece of art. Picked it up at a garage sale. But you got to blow on it before you play it? <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm very excited for Furiosa. This one is going to be very good. Uh, I will say, I got to shout out. I got to shout out Karsten for having one of the funniest tweets. This is all love for our boy over there. He was able to yeah. make it out. Bro, <laughs> they... <laughs> Uh, he, These... he tweeted a picture of him way off to the side of the screen and behind a speaker saying seated for Megalopolis, best seat in the house, which got a lot of people on film Twitter concerned, <laughs> concerned trolling, maybe. I love Karsten, bro. I lo- yeah. <laughs> He's the best, is honesty. We, you and I have had worse seats than this as well. Yeah. Why do festivals do this? <laughs> Why would this be a seat? You know what really got me? Remember when we went to South by and I refused to take everybody to the Rollins Theater because I said, ain't no way I'm taking all to, to the smallest screen and we got a better one at home? Mm-hmm. What is this screen, dude, for critics? Yeah, but we'll have to ask you in a little bit more about that, whether that's uh, the, the common uh, treatment for critics or if that's just what they got for this Megalopolis screening. Carson, by the way, I think tweeted later that he actually had a better seat for Megalopolis. I think that, I was, that was a bit of a hope. troll. But the Furiosa tree seat is not much better. Dude, this I saw this and I'm like, yeah, it's our TIFF seats <laughs> at the Visa. That's our TIFF right. seats at, at the – yeah, we, we, we've had that. But I, I had to give it <laughs> – this man has said who suffered more. Jesus on the cross of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Beggar tweet, bro. That had me laughing all morning. But shout out Karsten. He, he's been seeing some good stuff. He's one of the few who actually, actually 
verify that this movie is going to be a banger. And I trust oh. his opinion because he knows how good Franz is. He knows how good Barry is. But he also, I think, is tapped in with Andrea Arnold. This is the one that you had on your most anticipated. You Bird. brought it up for your Oscars bit. Bird. Yeah. I'm feeling a little. Stuff. I'm a little less sure about the Oscars prediction now that I'm, some people have had a chance to see it. Uh, but you know, maybe it pulls out a palm d'or and, and campaigns all the way. I don't know. Uh, regardless, it's a new Andrea Arnold, and that's reason enough to be excited about it. Um, yeah, you, you said Karsten liked it. I saw some people were mixed on it. Um, our, our guy, brother bro, also went to see it twice just to verify some of his really? thoughts on it. And I think he ended up liking it more the second time. Sick. So, yeah, uh, that's another one that I, I'm hotly anticipating. I don't know when we're going to end up getting it. I probably would imagine it ends up being like a fall festival, Toronto, New York Film Festival type of movie. Gotcha. The the Elori Jockstrap movie, what about it? <laughs> um, just that we're getting new Paul Schrader. Um <laughs> And it seems like he, he's got another idea for another one. So, you know, a lot of people thought this might be the last one, yet he just keeps plugging away. I, I didn't hear too much about uh, O Canada, aside from, as you mentioned, Jacob Lordy and his jockstrap. Also that he apparently, like, studied Richard Gere to make his performance more like Richard Gere's, which is kind of cool. Okay. But yeah, uh, that one's been getting maybe more of a mixed response, O Canada, as, as is traditional for Paul Schrader. What is a Paul yeah. Schrader movie but something with a mixed response from critics? I found out Zendaya skipped on Master Gardener. Her agent needs to be God, the Lord, because <laughs> I cannot imagine her taking that role. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably... Probably for the best. Don't know if that's Zendaya's target audience. That would kind of would have been like her Miller's girl or something like that. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, the substance, dude. What is this about? Because people have been coming out with the most polarizing reviews. It's either you love it or if you love it, you deserve to die. You are a you are a, <laughs> a, a, a hater of. I don't even know what the themes of yeah. this movie are. I saw this image from Beyond Fest. Yeah, with Whoa. you know her back sewn up in that way. Uh, yeah, it, it looks horrifying. People are describing this as a body horror film. That's mostly what I know about it. That and that the rec the director is Coralie Coralie Fargiet Fargiet. I don't I don't know mm -hmm. how you pronounce it, but she's the director who made Revenge uh, a few years ago. Stop. I don't know if you caught that movie. Stop the the hold on. Yeah, the one with the the girl out in the woods or in the desert. Uh, yeah, right? I believe... That's a banger movie, bro. That's a banger movie, bro. She back? Oh. I haven't seen Revenge, but I, I know people love that one. No. Bro, why do they do this? I've been hearing so many people say that if you call this new one a feminist movie, then you don't... It's directed by the woman who did... Re oh, we're not doing this, bro. I gotta... <laughs> see. No. Okay. All right. Now I know who to ignore. Yeah. Damn. It's gonna be that movie, then. Yeah, okay. I mean, look, there's there's a lot of people who are saying this that really this good. is Revenge the really early good. front runner for Palm d'Or out of Cannes. After it premiered, I think it was last night, maybe two nights ago, when I went onto my letterbox, everybody that I knew who had seen it had given it a 4.5. Not less, not more, 4.5. Uh, people are really, really responding to it so far. So it, it shot up immediately to the movie I'm most anticipating. Uh, it is Sheesh. a return of sorts for Demi Woo. Moore. Uh, it yeah, also co-stars Margaret Qualley. So, yeah, I mean, it, the substance, put it on your watch list. Damn. And my, my goofy is, I was like, the substance, okay, the substance. What's the title of the movie? I get it. It's got a lot of, it's got a lot of substance. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about? I'm excited for that one. Um, I've also heard mixed things about this one also. Uh, Emilia yeah, Perez. Emilia Perez. What, like, uh, Sicario <laughs> keeps getting dropped in multiple tweets. Yeah, Someone I mean, mentioned so this Jennifer with... Lopez as this is me dot 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 now. Yeah. Of uh, wild comparisons being made for this one with Zoe Saldana and Selena Gomez. There's some uh, trans storytelling here as well, which I know has some trans critics sort of like their antennas up with this one. Uh, but the reviews so far have been pretty solid. I mean, it's the latest film from, I, I want to say it's pronounced uh, Jacques Adiard, who, if you want to click on his filmography, has made a lot of films that uh, are like Khan's favorites. Um, oh, man. W w which one stands out to you? Because the most recent one, I oh, yeah, Prophet. Um, oh, hold on. 
Incredible film, bro. Mm-hmm. Incredible film. I'm seated. <laughs> You're ready for it? Bro, I just talked about this movie uh, for Madam Webb because they were all bashing my boy who's in this movie because they did him dirty. No, all the way. Pa- Paris, 13th District. Really good film. Even went back and read the graphic novel. Good, good, good stuff. I have no idea <laughs> what this movie's about, but I'm excited. I don't know if you're there, Zach. Tap in. Could have been my headphone. I unplugged my mic accidentally. So. Both of us, bro. I got up so fast I unplugged yours. Um, but yeah, that one looks that one looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, anything else stand out to you, or, or should we save it for uh, Ewan's appearance next week? Yeah, once Ewan appears, we'll be talking about more from Universal Language, which we got a link for. I told you it was a little Roy Anderson-ish, like if, if he was a Persian filmmaker and a little bit a little bit funnier. Um, I caught Holy Cow last night as well about this cheese maker who dies. So the cheese maker's son has to make his own cheese. Decent enough. But there's one that I told you to definitely get on. I got to make sure I pull it up over here. Um, it was, I just know it's called Salome, the story of Salome. I don't know why. It's not popping up on the letterbox, but I'm pretty sure it's Salomain. If you find that movie at Khan, do yourself a favor and go watch it. I thought this has been the best link that we've gotten so far about a courier who comes from Guinea and has to just like make it by because even the, the Uber account that he's working off of ain't a real Uber account. He's renting it from somebody. Check this one out. Um, uh, Zach's got the links for this, so we're going to do a whole dispatch with uh, you and you said he... What time does he get out of that new one he's gone? It should be any moment now. Apparently, the uh, screening of The Apprentice, which is the Donald Trump movie with Sebastian Stan and Jeremy Strong, is just letting out. Uh, Brother Bro liked it. So, yeah, maybe if we, oh. we vamp a little bit, uh, you and will jump on, but we'll, we'll see. 